Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time I've dug out all my old dust wrappers that are not actually wrapped around books. Now in most cases I've actually got the book. I've taken the dust wrapper off because it was a bit damaged and the book just looks better on the shelf without it. Other times I've not actually got the book but for some reason I have got the dust wrapper. So anyway I've got a big pile of these and I haven't been through them in maybe 20 years. Um, so that's what we're going to be having a look at today. So sit back, relax and let's take a look. Okay then, so I will reckon that the majority of the dust wrappers we're looking at today are penguin related ones. However, um, this first one here, the one that's on top is actually a pan. And it's, it is in a, a protective sleeve, but um, pan did do um, a handful of books with dust wrappers. And this is one of those ones. I think they did it because the the actual general book jacket wasn't that good in it. I guess the book wasn't selling, so they um, hurriedly put up a few dust wrappers to uh, maybe increase its uh, increase its marketing potential. Um, this is a Penguin Parade here. And to be honest, I've probably got, I've replaced these books, but and these copies that these books were wrapped around are long gone, but um, I never, when I sold books on, I just didn't go back and check what I even had. And um, I literally haven't been through these for you know, a couple of decades. Um, I've been adding to them, but not going through them. So here's a crime one, in fact. So that's pretty cool. Stealthy Terror. So, I mean, that's got the bits and pieces of a... I don't, that's nothing to do with it. Look, that's the wrong author. <laughs> so bits of a dust wrapper there, shall we say, for Stealthy Terror. Um, what's this? George's Booksellers. I remember George's. They they did have one in Plymouth for a little while, actually. It's a little bookmark there. George Morse. It's like, this is literally fragments. <laughs> Look at this. Bits of Penguin. I can't believe I saved all this, to be honest. But in the early days of being a collector, this sort of stuff... You did keep because I was, you know, I was always too worried to throw any of it away because I thought, well, I might, I might need it at some point, but I'm not seeing anything that rare yet. Or there's a bit more of a, there's a flap of a crime title. Um, I don't know. It's nuts, isn't it? I mean, these are quite good. So these are the reading case labels. So what you would happen, Penguin did produce their own sort of cloth, hardbound cloth covers that you could wrap your penguins in and you would it was designed to take off the original books wrapper cut out that little square like that and stick it on the spine and you'd have a much more permanent um penguin and uh i have got a few of those in my collection but that's what that was for ragged banners look at that. <laughs> these are real top quality you're seeing here today Let's see, look at this see you can see why underneath that's probably quite a nice copy and this is why i've just uh popped it on the uh on the case without the dust wrapper in night flight see that's actually not too bad but it's been repaired on the inside with some tape <laughs> in the midst of life 195 so this is from a period when I think the peng the late uh, late thirties ones. The penguins are actually really, really beautiful to look at. It's one of my favourite periods, and I just wanted them to look lovely on the shelf. It was as simple as that, you know. A fairly early one here, number seventy one. Oh, this is an early pan. So this is one of the pan hardbacks. Now I have got. I've definitely upgraded this, so this is definitely just a spare. But it's uh, pretty ropey. I don't know if anyone would actually want that ever wrapped around a copy of that book. And this is a much later one. So Penguin published the big thick D.H. Lawrence's as double volumes with the two penguins there. And on those particular ones, even in the 1950s, they did put dust wrappers around them and made them a little bit special. So that's what that is. Um, but it, my copy obviously looks much better without it on. Now, that's not too bad for number 42. That's actually not a bad dust wrapper, except... It's got the um, the faded spine, but apart from that, it's actually in pretty nice condition. So I've probably still got the book of that one, but my copy will just, you know, this eventually, I suppose I'd need to get all of these and compare the copies with my actual ones in my collection. Um, if I ever sold my penguins, I'd need to put this one back with it, really, because that's quite a nice wrapper. 
Um, here it's for special number five, ballet. <laughs> Another special. Once again, I do love the specials and I particularly like them in high grade, which they don't always turn up in, but they are out there. And it was always easier just to take them out of their wrappers rather than uh, have them on the shelf damaged. It's an early, early-ish one. 34, another special here. Our Mr. Ren, Penguin 21. Once again, yeah, it's been amateurly repaired historically. So it was much, much better to um, in a, um, God, you've got like a bit of a magazine in there. Much, much better to have that on the shelf without the dust wrapper on. God, look how bright and vibrant that one is. Number 193. So once again, that one probably could be married up with the book again if I was ever to sell my penguins. 49 here. Upton Sinclair, The Jungle. Mr. Weston's a good one. It's nice to see these because some of these came with priced and unpriced variations. And there are people out there who do like to have all the different versions. Not me. I should. One of each book is, is quite enough um, in most cases. Barbara of Putney. Another travel one there, 168. 20. Oh, that's really annoying me now. I'm going to fold that back out. 20 years are growing. So these are all from that sort of early ish period, aren't they? These penguins. A penguin parade number one, number 120. Two or four. Because when I started picking up penguins, you did generally, if they were issued in dust wrapper, the copies you found were generally still in the wrappers. But my like little trick was to take them out of the wrappers. Um, because a dealer would price the books down if it had a tatty wrapper on. But I would always look beyond the wrapper because I knew I could have them on the shelf loose. And um and generally get a few bargains see that one there that's not actually that bad too bad a wrapper i might be tempted to put that back on unless i've already got a better copy of it with a wrapper already in, intact you know um certainly the high-end collections for penguin and they are out there they're all immaculate in immaculate wrappers that's what they're aiming for um you had to go have been collecting a long long time to have a collection like that will be a book dealer <laughs> for them to come your way like that a few more end flaps here. God, it's bizarre, isn't it? I don't know what I'm going to do with all this eventually, but yeah, you know, two, three, three. As I said, I haven't been through these for so long. I honestly, I've got no idea what we're going to come across at all. But all I can think of is, at some point, I've got all these books at some point, and these are just taken off to be looking better copies. Because let's be honest, these wouldn't look great on the shelf, would they, with uh, these jackets on? Number seven there, Pelican number seven. <laughs> this one's been laminated. That special there on photography. Yeah, so I want to put that in. Ancient lamination. Now this, oh, this one's laminated as well. Must have been the same same collection. Ah, so that's the wrapper to Ragged Trousered Philanthropist. See that once again isn't too bad, but my I know my copy of that book isn't is also it must have been the one that was um in this wrapper because my copy is quite bright on the shelf, so I've had it out recently, so very pleased to see that. I don't know if we'll see any more crime titles. That would be quite cool, wouldn't it? Of course, the thing is with these, they're so, so delicate. They just generally haven't really survived, you know? To that one. Nice 
nice to see that one. Uh, this has been, this is in a wrapper as well. So that's been put in a plastic wrapper. I mean, it, in actual fact, that's not too bad. So once again, that I think would probably, I could pull it out of the wrapper. I think that one will, um, will probably be absolutely fine wrapped back on the book, in all honesty. I mean, there's a little bit of loss there, but not a great deal. <laughs> You'd see these odd adverts in there. 172. So I'd be very curious to know if anybody else does this. Um, so on their tatty books, which came with wrappers, do you uh, take them off? I've got to admit, I'm absolutely astounded that I've got so many here. I mean, we're only about halfway through. Um, I had no idea that I had so many. But I'm sort of glad I got them because they are sort of funny curiosity pieces, aren't they? Fragments of the back cover there. Blimey O'Reilly. And that literally hasn't got a, a front cover. I suppose nowadays, you know, a lot of collectors would, if it came up when it was missing like most of the jacket, most, I would imagine most collectors would just <laughs> throw them in the bin. But me being me, and I don't like to throw anything like this away, because I thought, well, you know, I might need them for repair jobs at some point. And it's nice to have period pieces stay of it <laughs> these could always act as donor donor dust wrappers i suppose Blimey, these are very very dodgy a few of these aren't they see that's a later one you just wonder what the history is of some of these where they've sort of been through you know mainstream i have a Seagulls are going for it. Oh, look, there's an illustrated classic. I mean, I don't know why I've got that. I mean, I've got all of those in pretty nice condition as well. Um, oh, there's the back of it. Bardley's The Magnificent. Book of Lear. That's a great, great early penguin, that one. Oliver Onions, what a name, eh? <laughs> National Valley. See, once again, that doesn't look too bad. It's just got a little bit of a browning spine. Um, so that would be one that would be one worth saving and pulling out. Probably the same with this as well. Oh, uh, see, there's another copy of National Valley. No, I don't need two. So that's definitely like a spare, isn't it, you know? This is what I mean. I have to. I think eventually I'm going to need to go through this little box with the books next to them. Wild strawberries. It's quite funny seeing them this way, isn't it? Crump folk going home. Of course, there won't be any mega rare ones because by the time the ones that are rare today were published during the war, and those generally didn't have wrappers anyway because there wasn't the paper to go round. So these were all from a time when um, paper was a bit more affluent, shall we say. So there's a second copy of Ragged Trouser Philanthropist. So once again, I definitely don't need two copies of it. And this is what I mean where I've had books that I've had doubles of over the years. I've sold them on, and um, but I've sold them without the dust wrappers. And I've just saved the dust wrappers for whatever reason. I don't know. Silverfish damage or something on the spine there. Look, number 12, you know. We haven't seen any of the first 10 yet. That would have been quite so. Although here's number 11, so we're getting closer. Oh, look, there we are. Look, number 10. So there is number 10, look. Because those exist in price to number price. Here's number 9. But you wouldn't want that on your number 9, would you? Let's be honest. Blimey, number two. Look, dust wrapper to number two. So it's the price dust wrapper. I mean, I, I had no idea I had this. I literally had no idea I had this one, this wrapper here. And it's not bad, is it? For 1935, look at that. I mean, even though it's, it's a toned dust wrapper, and that's probably 
it's dark like that probably from a coal fire where it's been on a bookcase that's still a valuable bit of paper there. <laughs> and there's number one well there you go look at that sadly not number five or six but yeah there's number one so a jacketed copy i think my copy of number one i have got without the dust jacket because it's toned again like that um but very nice to see yeah nice to see one of my favorite early ones the invisible man great story that one uh, a moment yeah, four plays pip ian hay well this has been quite a revelation actually <laughs> really glad i said I, I had no idea what was in here because i haven't looked at them in a long long time from shakespeare now um and it's not something i've done for ages i've not really picked up copies of books and then put the just wrappers away i don't remember the last time i added any to this pile it's a favorite of mine the escaping club so this has been yeah quite quite interesting a special number two there mussolini's roman empire a special number four wow there you go so we've had a few pans but predominantly old penguin ones 36 there another one i like flying dutchman of course not many other publishers did dust wrappers the collins of course did the early ones and i haven't been collecting them anything like as long as penguins so there's no collins ones in here although a few could probably would look better on the shelf without their just wrappers on this is one of the later ones here it's a penguin double again um, but it's number six seven eight number 25 that's another laminated one it's another laminated one but that doesn't seem too bad at all that might as well go on my book you know because that's quite a nice clean clean wrapper that one <laughs> If my copy of 40 isn't already in a wrapper, that is. It might be, and that's maybe a double. In which case, I ought to sort these doubles out, really. But I don't think anyone's going to really want some of this, but they're fun to look at, aren't they? All these early ones. A crime one there. Look, Death of My Aunt. That's not too bad, is it? It's got all the bits there. Well, this one here, let number 34 in a wrapper. Mr. Fortune, please. I think once again, that's all right. That's probably a few pounds. We'll add to the uh, the cost of the um, the book. Colonel's Daughter. Oh, look at that. Thin Man wrapper. That's very tasty, that. That's the earliest crime one. I mean, it's not bad, is it? Yes, it's got a darkened spine. But even so, that bit of paper is probably 10 to 15 pounds worth of money. Ah, look, a non-penguin one, a Muthan sixpenny. I love these. I really do. I get, I manage to find about one a year. So, uh, yeah, there's 20 in the set, to the best of my knowledge. So, if you've got any Muthan sixpennies, do let me know. Oh, look, an albatross. 382. Yeah, that's cool. I like the albatross books, of course. Mr. Perrin and Mr. Trail. Oh, that's that's Mr. Perry and Mr. Trout. Kai Lung and, Lo and rolls his mat. A complete angler. Cool, what a mess these are made. And then the, a few pelicans to finish off. Lord Shaftesbury. Socialism and Evolution. It's literally falling to bits in my hands, so we'll just leave that as is. Then digging up the past, which is sort of what we've been doing here today. So here we go. What a collection. I mean, absolutely nuts. I, I do hope you've enjoyed looking through those as much as I have. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that little look through those unusual 
displaced dust wrappers. I had no idea I had some of those, so uh, absolutely fantastic. If you have enjoyed that video, do please give it the thumbs up. Do please hit the subscribe button if you've not already for regular vintage paperback content. And I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.